Welcome to Science and Technology Briefing. The content of the briefing includes South by Southwest Sydney Festival boosts Harbour City's post-pandemic revival. Carisdale Capital goes short on Joby Aviation over earnings concerns. Warehouses are calling in the gig workers. Ontario Securities Regulator Exploring Artificial Intelligence Use in Capital Markets. U.S. Regulator Probes Twitter Security Lapse Before Musk Took Over Bloomberg News. South by Southwest Sydney Festival Boosts Harbour City's Post-Pandemic Revival. Bloomberg. Sydney will host the South by Southwest Festival for the first time outside North America. The event, which starts on October 15, is expected to attract around 27,000 visitors and inject 24 million Australian dollars, $15.4 million, into New South Wales' economy. The festival is seen as a boost to Sydney's creative industry, which has struggled with COVID-19 restrictions and restrictive night entertainment laws. Carisdale Capital goes short on Joby Aviation over earnings concerns. Reuters. Investment firm Carisdale Capital has taken a short position on Joby Aviation, citing concerns over the electric aircraft maker's profitability. Carisdale believes that Joby is still years away from generating operating revenue and warned of higher operating costs due to the lower range and power of its electric aircraft compared to traditional helicopters. Joby plans to operate as a rideshare app rather than selling its aircraft to customers like airlines and logistics firms. Joby responded by stating that Carisdale has a vested interest in lowering its share price. Joby is backed by investors including Delta Airlines, Toyota Motor, and Intel Corp. Warehouses are calling in the gig workers. Wall Street Journal. Logistics companies are offering more flexible schedules and shifts to attract workers in a tight labor market. Some warehouses are adopting gig economy practices, such as allowing workers to choose shifts or schedules that suit them. However, industrial jobs require specific training and expertise, which means employers are not able to simply hire gig workers in the same way that a passenger orders an Uber. Logistics companies are also looking to tap into a larger pool of workers across all industries who are seeking part-time or more flexible work. Ontario Securities Regulator Exploring Artificial Intelligence Use in Capital Markets The Toronto Star The Ontario Securities Commission, OSC, is exploring its potential role in overseeing the responsible adoption of artificial intelligence, AI, in capital markets. The OSC's report states that the use of AI in capital markets is primarily focused on improving efficiency, accuracy, trade surveillance, market manipulation detection, and customer service. The report also highlights the challenges of AI adoption, such as data constraints, competition for AI talent, and issues related to privacy, bias, and fairness. While large firms are currently using AI for customer support and advisory purposes, its use for trading, asset allocation, and risk management is limited. U.S. regulator probes Twitter security lapse before Musk took over Bloomberg News. Reuters. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, is reportedly investigating Twitter's handling of a security lapse in 2018 that exposed users' personal information. The agency is said to be examining whether former top executives adequately disclosed the privacy issues to shareholders or implemented proper controls. The bug in question allowed outsiders to view user email addresses during password resets, which revealed their identities. The SEC has not commented on the matter. A charity raised $69 million to support NSW firefighters. They got only $12 million. The Sydney Morning Herald an investigation by the Sydney Morning Herald has found that a not-for-profit charitable organization set up to support the state's volunteer firefighters has spent only 16% of the $69 million raised since 2014 directly on rural fire service members, with the majority being paid to a commercial telemarketer. The Rural Fire Service Association, RFSA, which is registered as a large charity with the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profits Commission, claims that the funds raised support fundraising efforts for rural firefighters across NSW and Prioritis's mental health and crisis support. However, analysis of financial documents submitted by the RFSA to the ACNC reveals that only 16% of the $68.6 million in revenue generated through fundraising has been spent on these programs. Over the same period, more than $36 million has been directly spent with telemarketer 4 Mile while another $16.7 million has been spent on operational costs. In contrast, more than 80% of World Vision's total funds go towards field program and advocacy work, with 9.3% spent on admin and accountability. Conflict everywhere. What is wrong with humans? The Sydney Morning Herald. Several letter writers express their dismay over the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine. 
One writer argues that the conflict is a result of toxic religious extremism within both Israel and Palestine and calls for moderate voices to replace the fundamentalists on both sides. Another writer criticizes the use of the word terrorist to describe Palestinians, arguing that it gives Israel permission to continue its reign of terror over the Palestinians. Another letter writer, who identifies as Jewish, condemns any deliberate targeting of civilians and argues that it undermines any moral authority. Another writer argues that Israel has a right to defend itself but condemns its actions in Gaza, calling for an end to the destruction of the region and its civilian population. The article also includes letters expressing frustration with supermarkets and their use of self-checkout machines. One writer accuses supermarkets of being on the nose and only interested in shareholder profits, while another argues that the use of self-checkout machines is frustrating and can result in false accusations of theft. Another writer suggests that supermarkets should offer a discount to customers who use self-checkout machines to ease frustrations. Finally, several letter writers express their opinions on various other topics, including proposed drug law reforms in New South Wales, the use of the Opera House sales for political statements, and the referendum on Indigenous recognition in the Australian Constitution. Lauren is a deaf person who loves live music. This technology lets her feel the music on her body. ABC. Advances in haptic technology are creating new ways for people to experience sound. Haptic technology provides users with physical stimuli, such as vibration or motion, to provide an immersive or realistic experience. The technology can also be used to communicate different sounds. The advancements have resulted in a growing haptic technology market, with devices becoming more accessible and compact. The technology is being used in live performances, as well as potentially assisting speech perception in people who are deaf or hard of hearing. However, the cost of the technology is currently a barrier to widespread implementation. And that's a wrap on today's news from the Six Dimensions. I'm Dr. Six, your resident observer, here to bring you the latest updates from across the realms. Let's dive into these stories and see what's been happening. First up, Sydney is getting a much-needed boost with the South by Southwest Festival making its debut outside of North America. This is great news for the city's creative industry, which has been struggling with pandemic restrictions. It's like a shot of adrenaline for Sydney's post-pandemic revival. In the world of finance, Carisdale Capital has taken a short position on Joby Aviation, expressing concerns about the company's profitability. The electric aircraft maker's plans to operate as a rideshare app instead of selling its aircraft has raised some eyebrows. Looks like there's some turbulence ahead for Joby. Speaking of work, logistics companies are turning to gig workers to fill the labor gap. Warehouses are adopting gig economy practices to attract workers with more flexible schedules. But let's not forget, industrial jobs require specific training and expertise, so it's not as simple as ordering an Uber. We'll have to wait and see if this trend takes off. In the world of artificial intelligence, the Ontario Securities Commission is exploring its potential role in overseeing the responsible adoption of AI in capital markets. While large firms are already using AI for customer support and advisory purposes, its use for trading and risk management is still limited. Looks like the OSC is keeping an eye on the AI game. Over in the tech world, the US Securities and Exchange Commission is reportedly investigating Twitter's handling of a security lapse in 2018. The bug exposed users' personal information, and the SEC wants to know if the former top executives disclosed the privacy issues properly. Looks like Twitter might have some explaining to do. Now, let's talk charity. An investigation has revealed that a not-for-profit organization meant to support volunteer firefighters in New South Wales has spent only a fraction of the funds raised directly on those firefighters. Most of the money went to a commercial telemarketer instead. That's not exactly what you'd call a good return on investment. And in a more serious note, readers of the Sydney Morning Herald expressed their thoughts on the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine. It's a complex issue with passionate opinions on both sides, but it's important to seek peace and understanding. In a lighter story, advances in haptic technology are allowing people to experience sound in new ways. This technology has the potential to make live performances more immersive and even assist speech perception for those who are deaf or hard of hearing. It's like feeling the music in your bones. That's it for today's news from the Six Dimensions. I hope you enjoyed the journey through these diverse stories. Now it's your turn to join the discussion. What are your thoughts on these topics? Do you have any burning questions for me? Let's hear it from you. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide.
we encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.